I mean, as far as a first print, uh, I'm really satisfied with this. We will probably move on to a really short production run of possibly laser or water jet cutting some plastic panels to sort of really kind of field test the concept. I think we'll be full speed ahead. I think this is gonna be really, really cool. <laughs> Welcome back to Building Built Right. This week we've got another uh, R&D kind of product design prototyping episode for you. We are exploring the use of a composite material in making molly panels. Check it out. If you're watching this, you probably know that we make make and model specific molly panels for a lot of trucks and SUVs. But oftentimes we'll have customers call in or potential customers call in and ask if we're going to make molly panels for some obscure vehicle. And in cases where we know the answer is no, we didn't historically have an answer. So what we did is we created a lineup of universal tech plates. We call them tech plates. They're molly panels um, in various sizes. So that if you have an application that we're unlikely to support, whether it's a boat, race trailer, garage, some obscure vehicle, um, we do have a solution for you. And oftentimes people will, will make these work. We sell a hardware kit as well. But what we've learned over the years selling these universal panels is, is we've learned more about the way people use them. And for some of these smaller sizes like this, um, people are using them in, in, a, in a way where a lighter duty panel or a lighter weight panel might actually be better and would definitely be strong enough. So what we're kind of exploring is the idea of having a line of products that complements these really, really rigid steel panels um, with maybe a lighter duty product that will work better for, for some people. The other way that we've had people talking about using these is as a panel to store like your EDC, your everyday carry, or items that you need to move from your truck to your gym bag to your backpack. Um, if you had a panel, say like maybe this size or like this, that was composite and you could strap things or tie things to the panel to move them from one, one thing to another, um, that that might be useful. So what we're gonna kind of explore is the idea of adapting the design of some of these panels to be used in a manner that's a little bit different than the steel panels. So we're gonna kind of like brainstorm some ideas on the whiteboard, maybe sketch one up in CAD and print one to kind of play with. So let's, we'll kind of shift over to the whiteboard and we'll just start working through it. Okay, so before we go to the whiteboard and start sketching, kind of some of the ideas, the ways that we would maybe change this panel um, to make one out of composite is, obviously there's some fundamental engineering things that'll change in order to get a good clean injection mold using a glass fiber reinforced nylon material. Um, and, and we'll work through some of that, but also, Usability wise, one of the things I'm thinking about is um, in order to attach things to this panel that are lighter duty, you might not use our stainless or our steel mounts. You might use something like a Velcro strap or a web dominator like this. We sell a lot of these for use with our Velcro products. I'm kind of wondering if there might be a way to, to make these, these more useful. So one of the things that comes to mind is if we had some slots built into the panel. Now I'm just, these are just the slots that happen to be in this panel, but we could put, you know, a, a custom size in where, you know, some purpose built slots like this, where you could kind of have straps like this set up in order to put something in here. I'll just grab this since it's sitting here. Um, that might be a knife, might be a flashlight, cinch it down. We'd have to get the length right on the Velcro. But to adapt, kind of to be able to use straps like that. The other thing that that kind of led to was these are pretty slick. If you've got this through a, um, a, like a textile or a fabric molly panel, like our tech panels, um, you can cinch something down and this uh, shot cord will hold it in here because it's gripped here. And I can't help but wonder if along the edge of the panel, say something like this, we had a hole where you could um, loop shot cord like this through it. And then what if along the edge of the panel, we designed in this feature that grabs the shock cord, right? So that, so that without, without an additional piece, with just some shock cord, you could be creating loops like that on the panel. So fundamentally, the panel will still have these, this kind of block and slot type pattern, um, but maybe we're adding some more smaller slots or replacing some of these larger slots with some of the features that we're talking about. So. I'm gonna start kind of sketching pieces of this to see how it might work together. And then we'll probably go from there to CAD. All 
All right, so this is obviously pretty crude. What I'm realizing though is in order to loop it around like this, instead of like tying it with a knot back here, um, this is actually gonna have to be a series of holes or slots. So you can kind of come up and around this post here. This Velcro strap's three quarters of an inch wide. This is an inch and a quarter here. So it's gonna sit inside kind of like that, which is gonna leave plenty of meat for this feature here. This is a lot of holes, right? So our, we got our Molly features here and then two small slots stacked up. This is something that would be really pretty difficult to do out of uh, steel. If I move some of these features over to kind of an idea of maybe what the panel looks like, and this is actually kind of close to scale. Um, this is a ton of features. To, to laser cut this uh, or stamp this or punch this out of aluminum or steel would be pretty expensive and time consuming. And in some of these cases, difficult. But because we're going to um, injection mold this using a glass fiber reinforced nylon material, uh, you know, we'll just have to machine these, these features one time for the tool. Um, and, then it, and then it kind of doesn't really matter. Hmm. So um, the next step is probably to kind of take this concept, uh, massage it a little bit based on how we're going to use it, kind of again, another iteration. And then we'll try and move it into CAD and uh, maybe we'll 3D print one to play with. Cool. All right, so playing around with the idea of, right, we start talking about making this composite mm -hmm. to replace this or to be complementary to this, like for a set of consoles and stuff. Yeah. But then I started playing with the idea of the making it like an everyday carry type panel. You can move it from backpack to gym bag to truck to desk drawer, whatever it is. This is not really big enough for that, I think. I think it would have to be this, but like that. Right? If you wanted to have like a knife or a flashlight or a small first aid kit or a, they call them like an admin pouch, there's like a small pouch with some stuff. Or if you wanted to have like a holster on it. Yeah. You want like a pickup. This is not big enough. No. Yeah. Nino. So do you like the sound of Drake blasting through the wall? You know there's no one out there working, right? That earbuds. <laughs> I'll turn that down. <laughs> We have kind of like generally speaking what we um, had sketched out here, modeled. It's not finished, uh, no fillets on stuff, but I decided to kind of, I widened these molly slots up here, which would be more like ergonomic to grip. But I'm not wild about the fact that we're losing the full size uh, molly feature here and it looks a little funny. Hmm. I'm also thinking we need to make space for some mounting holes or slots so that if you did want to mount this panel to something, um, you would have the ability to do that. We also still need to run some finite element analysis to just to make sure that this panel thickness with this material will be sufficient. Um, we can add some thickness and we can add some like kind of some structural features. Um, this is currently it's an eighth inch thick. You kind of like three millimeters is about right for an injection molded piece like this. So if we wanted to add some rigidity we could add like a, like ribs mm -hmm. in the panel. Um, just kind of not there yet. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's kind of the status update, I guess. Still some finishing to do. I'm gonna print this evening, probably like a corner of this, just to sort of test out some of that functionality with the straps and stuff and see if it is the way that we think it will be um, like behaviorally, performance-wise. So that's where we're at. Cool, looks good. All right, so obviously we're back at the plasma table right now. In addition to 3D printing a prototype or a portion of a prototype to test functionality, um, we're gonna cut one of these panels, a rough prototype, out of this 16 gauge steel. We happen to just have this as material. Uh, obviously we're talking about making it out of composite. It'll be a little bit thicker than this. The reason we're gonna do this is so that we have a full size one-on-one -on -one scale piece that we can sort of handle and play around with, make sure you can kind of lay out the items that we think we might use it for on it. Just kind of make sure the size and shape and feel of it is right. So. I'm just going to rip this out of this piece of material here and then we'll clean it up and we can handle it.
Well, it looks good. Didn't finish cutting on that side. Yeah, it's kind of, we made the DXF a little differently. Normally when we're prototyping things on this, we're prototyping sheet metal parts. Because this is designed to be injection molded, we designed it in CAD a little bit differently because we need to have draft and a parting line and we can have some different contours in it. So we did that and kind of took a shortcut to convert it to a DXF, like a flat file for sheet metal. And it looks like it didn't pick up some of these curves quite right. So this is stuck in there. Yeah, I'll probably on Monday or tomorrow cut another one because I, I can resolve that. Luckily, I mean, the 3D print too, though, it, it does the job. It shows us that the functionality is there. Yeah, and I can even just tell by looking at this and like this feels like the right size. Like if you're if you're watching, it's like a little bit bigger than an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. But I don't like being defeated by things like this. That's so valid. we'll we'll cut another one out another day. Cool. All right, so as we discussed, we 3D printed a corner of that pattern that we kind of concepted and modeled up because we wanted to test the fine geometry of some of these features. Um, so we'll look here at the Velcro first. I've got this, you know, pretty simple Velcro strap, kind of threaded through those slots. Everything fits nicely. Uh, you can get these in different uh, lengths. Um, so it might be a little bit long because this, this knife is kind of small, but the idea being, you know, quickly and easily cinch something up like that. Obviously you'd want to be using a, a shorter strap, um, but that functions exactly like I was hoping it would. And then on the flip side, we've got this elastic uh, shot cord here coming through this first, I guess, bar or set of slots. Could move it over here if you had something bigger, but put this here, pull it around and cinch it into that feature that we copied from the um, web dominator. And you can see it cinches that elastic cord pretty well. This is uh, not going anywhere. So, I mean, as far as the first print, this is really, uh, I'm really satisfied with this. We will probably move on to a really short production run of possibly uh, laser or water jet cutting some plastic panels to sort of really kind of field test the concept, see if it's useful. Um, at the same time, we'll continue refining the design to be injection molded. We'll add some, some additional structure and some branding. And uh, I think we'll be full speed ahead. I think this is going to be really, really cool. It's certainly I will be able to use it. And I think, um, I think some of our customers will like this as well. So that's it. Another successful kind of quick product development sprint. Next Monday, next week, we're going to dig into the Raptor build again. We just got a pile of parts from our friends over at Cobb Tuning. And uh, I'm itching to install their new intake. So I think next week we're going to install their intake. And uh, I used to design intakes at a previous job. So we may get a little bit nerdy with some of the testing on that. Um, check it out Monday.